Some cases don't show at all in your monthly cash receipts. Your only compensation is the warm feeling you get deep inside. A case that would be, say, uh, in the public good and welfare. The first nudge it gave me was in Dolan's coffee pot. I was having a steak burger, free on Dolan. Dolan was paying off a World Series bet. His team had lost. The nudge came from a girl, 20 maybe, give or take a year, in a cloth coat with a babushka around her head. A scared look to her, like she just dried her tears. Mr. Craig, if you'll excuse me. Oh, I do. Be my guest. No, thanks. Oh, the food's good here. Sanitary kitchen. Well, it's awfully nice of you, but I... Coffee, then. Uh, hey, Dolan. One java, piping hot. <laughs> now, no need looking so scared, miss. People come up to me all the time. Then it's not unusual for me to... Oh, not one bit. The day my private life gets too private, friend, make room on that bread line. My name is Norma, Mr. Craig. Well, stretch it. Norma Barron? Your own crisis or a borrowed one? I I'm here on behalf of my boyfriend, Chris. Chris Joukowsky. Here with his consent and blessing? No. Oh, he'd be furious if he... Uh, 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 enough said. Uh, hand me a napkin. Napkin? For my steak burger. I'll wrap it up and finish it under the stars. Uh, my guess is that you'd feel freer without so many ears around. Well, it is awfully crowded here. Everybody's staring at me. The stars looked down and the sounds of the river made like tubers in the Philharmonic Orchestra. Norma got around to the point of her mission. Chris is wild, deliberately bent on destroying himself. How familiar, reckon. Youth carrying a chip. The country doesn't know it, but we've got an undeclared civil war on our hands. An undeclared civil war? Youth against the grown-up. Total war and no weapons barred. Read the daily papers. It is horrible. We don't come to some solution about it. We'll slip back into the dark ages. But uh, get on with Chris. Oh, he's carrying a gun. He doesn't know I know. That's why I came to you. Why not the regular police? Oh, I didn't dare. Gee, I don't want Chris in trouble. I wanted him understood and helped. How close are you to Chris? Oh, we've been going together since school. I've never known any other boy. Girls will sure pick them. Well, deep down, Chris is good and gentle and decent. So, okay. Who might argue with love? So what sours, Chris? I'm not too sure. Personality problems, I think... The hard time he's been having, his his lack of direction. That about covers what ails the world. Does Chris work? He keeps losing jobs. Oh? Tell me about his associations. They aren't good. Chris goes where he's accepted. He doesn't uh, discriminate. What's got him feeling so low down and rejected? Besides his hard luck with jobs. Well, he's always felt second rate. His boyhood was a mess. Parents? An aunt and uncle. Not always a satisfactory substitute. Okay, I'll look Chris up. See what's got the boy toting a gun. Tchaikovsky, only he didn't know it for the time. I wanted to tail him for a while on the QT, see what pattern of movement was typical to him. Average looking, except for his clothes. The clothes were stylish, a fancy Dan cut to them. His movements for a while were very typical of the young tough. Lounging in front of a barber shop, then across the street to lounge some more in front of the Apollo Billiard Academy. A little chit-chat with a few young fellows trying to look hard. And then with the 10 p.m. chimes, Chris took himself a walk, with me not far behind him. A short walk it turned out to be to a movie house, the Odeon. Double feature playing Death in Spades and Girl of the Manitoba Trail. I was right in line with him, buying an admission ticket. The guy buys into a movie house. He generally finds a seat and settles down for a three-hour snooze. Not Chris Tchaikovsky. He no sooner got in, he was leaving by the balcony fire exit. Follow a guy down an iron staircase. You can't always be the quiet man who isn't there. The staircase underfoot sets up a whine. Loud enough for Chris to hear. I saw him waiting for me in the alley. Looking very suspicious and hostile. Hold on a minute there, mister. Holding on. Yes? Two of us on that staircase. I'll come. The picture was from hunger. 
Like you, I decided to leave. Why the fire exit? Oh, the fastest out. No pushing past people in the lobby. I got my cue from you, Sonny. So what's bothering you? I don't like strangers behind me. Nice persecution complex? No. Nothing. Fancy talk. Uh, all right for me to keep going? Yeah, I guess. All right, sure. Yeah, you you read about muggers all the time, mister. Sure. Always suspect a guy creeping behind you. That way you grow up to be a grandfather someday. So scram already. Let's don't make it a coffee clot. Sure, let's don't. But before I bow out, I've got something for your nervous system. Oh, my nervous system? Now what? A jolt. A real one this time. Hey. Hey, you got a run on me. Haven't I, though? <laughs> you ain't gonna make out. All I got is one buck and a pack of smokes. And a gun? Come again. I said you've got a gun. Oh, now, what makes you think that? My x-ray vision. Keep your buck and cigarettes. Just pass up the hardware. Let's have it. Sure. You know something? What? You know, stick up. You're a cop. Know something? What? You're so right. I know an empty warehouse a few blocks south. Let's go to it, huh? What for? Privacy. There's a loading platform we can squat on. Have a nice, long talk. Nice, long talk? Hey, what's with you? Rambulate, Sonny, or I'll get you there the hard way. The only company we had around the warehouse loading platform was a family of cats. I pulled out all the stops in talking to Chris Tchaikovsky. You were in and out of the Odeon Theater to establish a time alibi covering three hours in case of a pinch. You're crazy. You made sure the cashier and the ticket taker saw you. You went out of their way to greet both of them. They both know me since I was a kid. Maisie and Sam Guinness, how long don't I know them? Some cop asked you about where you were tonight. You show them the ticket stuff. Yeah. Then they asked me about the pitch, his wise guy. I can't answer that. You saw me leave right away. You saw the movies last night. You got in somehow without being noticed by the cashier or the ticket taker. Either that or somebody briefed you on the pictures. You know them by heart. Go on. Make a federal case out of nothing. Packing a gun isn't nothing, Sonny. There's a law against it. I found the gun over on a lot in the weeds. Even at that, granting the lie, the law is still against it. I didn't know how to dump it. There's the police station house. For the cops to push me around? Oh, wouldn't I be nuts? There's a sewer on every block. A sewer, yeah. Yeah, I should have thrown it down the sewer. You should have. Only thing, you, uh, you had a robbery all set up. And the gun figured in it. Say what you like. Go ahead, you got nothing on me. The gun. Okay, the gun. So pull me in. You could come clean with me. <laughs> you could take a... Uh, uh, uh. Wash your tongue. So you're sticking to the cartoon, huh? Tough Chris Tchaikovsky. Don't you go making fun of me. Like others have, huh? What do you mean by that? The laughs at your expense. The laughs that soured you on people in society. And even on yourself. Ain't nobody been laughing at me. I know. Not lately. Not since you've become a sinister figure. You're crazy. And you're as self-conscious and unsure as anybody I've ever met. Now, why do you say that? I'm looking squarely at you. Oh. You're another one like that? That uh, disfigurement in your face, your right cheek. How did it happen? The fire. I was a kid. We lived five flights up over on Leonard Street. I got burned bad. One profile, you're fine. A handsome gent. But on the other side, you're a scarecrow. Mr. Gun or no gun, I'll break your head. I'll... Oh. Sorry. I just wanted to see how deeply you felt about your looks. I don't think about it until a wise guy reminds me. But you do me. think about it, Chris. It's on your mind and in your eyes and heavy on your soul. It's got you toting a gun and planning robberies. I'll ask you again. Come clean. Come clean about what? The robbery scheduled for tonight. Where? Who? And the fellows in it with you. Their names. I got nothing to tell you. Nothing. The code, huh? The pony code of honor. Don't squeal. Don't even let out a peep in the electric chair. Where do you live? That's for you to find out. I don't think I'll try. Good night. Good night? You... You let me go? For now. Oh. You gotta keep hounding me. Yeah. From here in, I'm the angel over your shoulder. You'll never walk alone. You think. 
I'll get even with you. You watch. You dirty no good copy, you just watch. I didn't bother answering that. I let the family of cats do it for me. In the morning, I had eggs and coffee, still free on door. <laughs> Meals for a month on the house. That had been my winning World Series bet with Dolan. The morning papers told me what Chris Joukowsky wouldn't talk about the night before. Mass gunmen shoot hotel cashier and hold up. Escape with 6000 in cash. The Eberly Hotel, nine blocks from the warehouse where I'd sat out the evening with Chris Joukowsky. Nine blocks. A ten-minute stroll for Chris from the alleyway of the Odeon Theater. I'd sure gummed up his plan. Not being able to find Chris Joukowsky, I found his girl, Norma Barron, instead. She was busy at work in a glove factory. A peace worker. Norma ran up the side seams on a machine. So fast, I could swear the lady had eight hands. I can't talk to you now. It's important. Please, Mr. Minton, he's the foreman. He's got a production schedule. He's a fanatic. We can free the slaves. Craig can do no less. Jokes inside, I'll be laid off. Please, you'll only free me to be unemployed. When's lunch hour? Twelve o'clock. I got a box lunch here. Well, quit now. I'll get you another job. What at? I can't keep yelling over your sewing machines. What at? Now, let me see. Yeah, receptionist. At my dentist, Doc Friedman. Forty per and all the National Geographics you can read from ten to five. Oh, see, I've been dying to get paid for doing nothing. So? Has me already got a receptionist? Yeah. But Hannah's getting married over the weekend. Fell in love at a roller skating rink. Well, you quit now? <laughs> Do I? Oh, just give me two minutes. For what? A choice word I've been saving up for the foreman, Mr. Minton. Have I been dreaming of this day? Norma was just too nice a girl to be making two hands do the work of eight. I asked her help in finding Chris. I'm afraid Chris has gone away. Why do you think that? His room. He wasn't in it this morning. His room? Furnished room at Mrs. Bester's. I ring Chris's bell mornings and we eat breakfast together and then he walks me to work. Did you go up to his room? Yeah, I... It? It looked like Chris had vacated it. His personal stuff wasn't around. No note for you? No. Of explanation? Oh, no. <laughs> no note. Your nose just lit up. My nose just... It always does when a nice girl stoops to Paul's head. Now, let me have the note. I was always a poor liar. <laughs> Here. Norma, going out of town for a while. Maloney's first chance I get. Chris. What does Maloney's first chance I get mean in lover's code? Or Chris will telephone me. Maloney runs the barber shop. Hey, what trouble is Chris in? I'm not sure. The morning papers, however, are full of a hotel shooting and stick-up. Chris? No. So happens I'm his alibi for last night, thanks to you. Thanks to me? If you hadn't sent me after him, it's my notion Chris would have been one of the masked gunmen last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now don't be too relieved. He's on the lam, voluntarily or by force. Force? Chris didn't show up with his gun last night. His friends want to know why not. They had a job blueprinted with Chris fully informed. That makes Chris a possessor of dangerous knowledge. Yeah, Chris might have lambed voluntarily or by persuasion. You said before a hold-up and a shooting. A shooting? The night cashier in the Hotel Eberly. Oh. He's got a bullet in him. Pierced a lung. First surgery was successful. But a second might not be. It could be murder. If the cashier dies. A man of 65, Norma. Shock alone can kill him. Oh, what a lucky thing that Chris was... Pause in your prayers and write out a list of Chris's so-called friends, huh? All of them you know. Play good angel and Dutch uncle to a problem, kid. The whole world doesn't take kindly to it. Sometimes there's a sharp protest from persons known and unknown. In this case, persons unknown. Some belligerent shooting up street lamps. Correction, shooting up confidential investigators. This shot practically singed my whiskers. I made the safety of a shoeshine power. 
I needed a shoe shine even less than I needed a hair set. In the shoe shine parlor, the guy shining my shoes kept laughing to himself. <laughs> Squat little guy with a nose built from ear to ear. The name on his glass window read B. Santo. Why not share the joke, cousin? <laughs> you laughing at me or at the world? Hey, let's have the other shoe. Just where would you prefer it? Oh, tough, huh? Just a little sensitive right now, laughing boy. I'm laughing about what went on. Went on where? The street out there. You're not knowing where all the shots were coming from. Oh, but you knew, huh? Yeah, I knew. <laughs> now I'm going to let you hear what's been breaking me up like this. The joke you asked about? So tell me. It so happens I know where your next shot's coming from. You do? Yeah. See? My, it's small. The size of my hand. Don't tell me the gun's been in your palm all the time you've been flipping the shine ray. It has. Look, I'll show you how the tricks work. <laughs> See, I'm shining them up. All the time I got the gun palmed. Well, what do you know? Cute, huh? Very. <laughs> well, I ran right into the spider's web. <laughs> right straight in. Uh, don't suppose we'll get to the other shoe now. Nah, I'm off that. Don't suppose you want payment for half a job. It's on the house. Thanks. Well? Well, what? What now? You come down off that chair. Yeah. Off the chair. First things first. Sure. Okay. Coming down to your left. Ow, ow, ow. You dropped something, cousin. Oh, my hand. Hey, very foolish reaching to get your gun. I said very foolish. I only fire one warning shot. That's all that's required of any cop. <laughs> You're not too bright, cousin. Ordering me down off a high perch, you should have backed out of range of my feet. Oh, my thumb's busted. Nothing fatal. A busted thumb, how do I make a living? Which raises the question, just how do you make a living? I'll answer that for you. You do odd jobs from Maloney to Baba. Maloney to Bob? Who, who's he? I like my guess. From that surprised look on your face, I like my guess very much. Mess with Maloney, you're a dope. Maloney's a dope. A rifle isn't standard tonsorial equipment for a half inch. Park your shine rack, Junior, and grab your hat. You, you're locking me up? I'm turning you over to a chap named Trav Rogers, Lieutenant Trav Rogers. He's locking you up. What, Judge? Conceal weapons for a starter. Let's go. Hey, that's the yard out there. I know. The temperature in the street's too sizzling for comfort. What with Maloney doing his barbering with a rifle? We'll catch ourselves a nice breeze. Going out the yard and over a few fences. Lead us in our journey, Santo. <laughs> Neighborhood hoods organized into a stick-up gang, like a respectable cover. To be able to point to, quote, the legitimate gainful employment, unquote, when the heat is on. I let Maloney the barber trim my hair. There you are, friend. All cut. Hold the mirror to the back of my head, huh? Yeah, yeah, sure. Nice, huh? The line zigs up and zags down. Style to it. I always give style to And the uh, sideburns, cockeyed. One's over my ear and one's under. You got a lot of complaints. My head of hair. Next time, take it someplace else, huh? What barber college did you study in, chum? That's my business. But I can guess. Sing, sing. I take so much needling and then... It... Oh, well, oh, I... I beg your pardon. <laughs> What did you do that for? Oh, it's an accident. I was getting off the chair. I didn't see your big fat stomach in the way. I got a sit. You knocked the wind out of me. Yeah, let me help you sit. Oh, oh. oh uh, Maloney. Yeah? You conscious? What? What's got into you? You're a lousy barber. As a matter of fact, I don't even think you are a barber. Yeah, you're crazy. It's just fast around the neighborhood. You're a barber like Santo down the street is a shine boy. Santo? Santo. The last I saw him, he was being fingerprinted. On your feet. <laughs> I've already asked around the neighborhood, Maloney. Heard all I need to know about you. A uh, bull. Nobody in the neighborhood even said hello to you. No, huh? Because you've got them intimidated, huh? 
Anybody talks to a cop, the next fellow they talk to is the undertaker. I'm sure listening to a lot of words. Indulge me. Stick-ups this end of town originate here in your barber shop. Like the one last night in the Eberly Hotel. Like 20 others that have gone unsolved the last two months. Young men in here get a lousy haircut and a big education in crime. Words. Words to dress up an indictment. I've got a list of names with me. Skinny Morrow, Buck Edwards, Pinky Dodge, Dutch O'Melveny, Red North. You've been copying names out of a telephone book. Names of young fellas ruined by Maloney. Gun toters and stick-up artists. Ask me where the fellas I read off are right now. Uh, you're talking. Being rounded up by the police. What are the odds that one of them spills the Maloney story? I want to call my lawyer. Soon. Soon as the show is over. The show? For what show? A squad of cops on their way here. The store, back room and basement. They're going to take it apart. I'll lay odds on what they'll find. Rats and roaches. And cameras, radios, rings, watches, etc. Maybe even a big piece of that 6000 taken at the Eberly Hotel last night. Settle down with the comics, Maloney. We've got ten minutes to kill. I bagged a lot of wild game. I had the standing room only sign out of the local clink. But I still had the problem of Chris Chikowsky on my hands. I thought that went over, and then I took my thoughts to a fellow uptown. A fellow with an odd name who wore a short white coat with the pomp of a Maharaja in a ceremonial robe. His name, Igor von Strater. Dr. Igor von Strater. I had Norma Barron along with me to solemnify the occasion. I'll be pleased to do what you ask, Mr. Craig. Great. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate Medicine has a soul, too, Mr. Craig. Like your profession. Then the sum we agreed on. Here, 300. You'll find it all there. But I will be pleased to accept nothing. Uh Uh-uh. A $2,000 job for a measly three C's is charity enough. You have got an overhead. When will you send a young man to me? Tomorrow or the next day. I've got to work over him before you can. Let's go, Norma. Driving away, Norma could no longer contain herself. A plastic surgeon. Best man in New York. You heard his usual fees. Yeah. $2,000. The only permanent cure I know for your guy. Fix that cheek of his and you fix his morals. His inferiority feelings began when the fire mutilated his face. Yeah. In my heart, I've always known that about Chris, but... But? Well, gee, $300 of your own money, it, it's not fair to you. It's not my own money. <laughs> it's Maloney the Barber's contribution. Maloney? I don't know... I scooped up the contents of his cash register before the police raid began. I found $298 net. I added two bucks of my own. Maloney's dough, so what? For the fellows he's ruined, I say let Maloney's money do one fellow some good. Call it poetic justice. Oh, gee. Uh, I don't know what to say. Say this. When Chris Tchaikovsky finally rings you on that telephone. Come home, Chris. Come back to the old block. Use every feminine persuasion you know. You make it sound extra important. It sure is. I'm putting on a show for Chris, sister. A show with fireworks he'll never forget. He's got to do some suffering before the magic rainbow appears. For the good of his immortal soul. When I'm done with Chris, he'll be very happy to live. Happily ever after. The phone call to Norma came through and soon enough... Chris Tchaikovsky take a quiet evening stroll down the old block on his way to meet Norman. I let him cross from Santo's shine parlor to Maloney's barber shop before I opened fire. When he fell face down in the gutter, I gave him a couple of extra shots. I watched him roll over, face upward to the sky, then go rigid as the angel of death tapped him on the brow. <laughs> a hysteria reaction. All pure shot. Chris's death was grossly exaggerated. After all, how could he be dead when I'd been using blank bullets? Soon, I listened to Chris Tchaikovsky talk to himself. A miracle I wasn't killed. Only had a rig for me to be killed. A miracle the bullets passed all around me. 
still feel you owe loyalty to rats? Well, in my lesson, I learned it. Ready to get it all off your chest now? Yeah, sure. Anything I know to tell. You'll feel better for it. The underworld code is for suckers, son. The rat you're protecting is generally aiming a knife at your back. Yeah, a gun, you mean. Yeah, I know that now. And how I know that. While Chris Tchaikovsky was getting it all down on police record, I had a few private words with Norma. You fake the attempt on Chris's life. Yeah. <laughs> Show a man the face of death and he develops a love of life. The good, clean life. Sorry the shock therapy had to be so, well, melodramatic. Oh, I fainted dead away when I heard the shots. <laughs> when Chris gets through with his statement, ride him uptown to Dr. Venstrata for that operation. Yes, I will. At once. And, uh, Norma. Yes, Mr. Craig? My trick with Chris. Is it, uh, our secret? Oh, yes, Mr. Craig. I promise you it will always be our secret. And thanks. <laughs> Thanks. 